Welcome back to Just Life with Cicely Porter. I know it's been a while, but you know, that's life. Uh, despite not posting, the streams and downloads to Just Life have been just as steady, and I'm so grateful for that. And that really gives me motivation to continue this podcast, continue doing episodes, and just talk about life. So there will be some changes um, instead of waiting for the magical day where Sonia's schedule and my schedule align and we have free time, we decided that we are going to start doing Lonely Girl episodes where only one of us will be jumping on and talking with guests or just by herself, kind of debriefing life if we have a big update. Of course, we will try to continue doing episodes together, but Instead of waiting and waiting and maybe not having a perfect time, we want to keep pushing episodes out there. So this is what we have came up with. So welcome to the first Lonely Girl podcast. Um, to make it a little bit less lonely, I have one of my favorite girlfriends on, Kelsey mm -hmm. Carpenter Cromenaker. So Kelsey, before we get into talking, I want to introduce you and tell the listeners how we know each other. So we started, or okay, let me back up. In 2020, uh, COVID was locked, like everything was locked down and there was nowhere to go, nothing to do. I saw a post that there was a application and there were low numbers in the Jasper County Queen pageant. Running for queen never crossed my mind. Um, but when I saw it, I was bored and I was like, you know what? This could be kind of fun. And I was in 4-H. I'm big fair girl. So it kind of felt like a perfect fit. So I go audition and I end up winning Miss Jasper County 2020. But Kelsey was my big mentor. She was Miss Jasper <laughs> County 2019. So she's one of my best queen friends. And she's just a wonderful person, an amazing role model. So I knew she would be a perfect guest. You've been on my list forever. So I'm so glad we're finally <laughs> able to do this. Um, but yeah, um, I'll let you kind of introduce yourself. Um, I have like the basics of where you went to school and everything. So I'll read that off and then you can kind of just tell the viewers about yourself what I miss. Okay. okay. So Kelsey is 24. She's from Francisville, Indiana. It is a very small town, <laughs> smaller than Rensselaer. So yes, <laughs> very small, but she went to Indiana Wesleyan for two years and then transferred to Purdue university. Uh, you did cheer there, right? Yes, I was on the cheer team there for both years. Okay, so she's also a collegiate cheerleader. And then she now works for a USDA Farm Service Agency, where she has multiple different programs to help farmers and ranchers, which, as we talk, is very important to both of us. So I'm glad yeah, I'm for sure. excited to get into that. And then she also, which we'll, we will do a deep dive into this, she co-owns Beautiful You Boutique with her mom. So yes. we have a business, a business owner, um, just a girl boss, you know, you <laughs> have the most amazing style, but what did I miss? What do the viewers need to know about Kelsey? I think you pretty much covered me in a nutshell, especially with um, talking about, you know, being part of the fair and the fair queen stuff. Um, but yeah, you covered where I went to school. Um, I went to school for ag business. So again, kind of in that um, ag field. But yeah, I think you kind of covered everything. Awesome. And I'm sure like once we get going, we'll be oh, yes. <laughs> adding some more stuff in as we always do. But for the listeners who are new here, we start the episodes off with a life update, just kind of updating what's going on in my life, what's going on in the guest life, and just kind of keeping you updated. So I will start and then I'll throw it to Kelsey, who has been super busy, but <laughs> um, first me. So it's been a minute since I've been giving my life updates on here, um, since July. So July, I ended up emceeing for the Jasper County Fair Queen pageant, which was a really cool experience. I really enjoyed it. And we'll probably talk a little bit more because pageantry has just been huge in both of our lives. Um, let's see, July, that was my big highlight in July. I, I had a bunch of weddings this summer, which was new to me, um, which I you had your own wedding. So that's like a whole nother <laughs> thing. But I For had sure. three weddings back to back, three weeks in a row. 
and it was so fun. I love weddings. They're just so fun. I, I just love them. Like I, me too. <laughs> I'm so excited for our twenties because like, yeah, it's a lot and it's stressful to like buy gifts and buy outfits and everything, but they're like the best time. So I'm looking they forward are. to yeah. everyone's wedding and yours was so fun. And I'll let you talk about your wedding too, which that'll be part of your life update. But that was July, August. Um, one of my weddings was in Kansas city. So I got to go to Kansas city ate the barbecue and it was just the most cool place I've been to in a while. Um, it's one of those cities that's a big city, but it still has that like small feel. And have you been to Kansas city? I have not, but I've always wanted to go. So it is really cool. I mean, you have to get barbecue when you're there, which phenomenal. I love barbecue. Oh, me too. Um, (laughs) The wedding was super fun. It was for my friend, Elijah and Bella, and I'll probably have them on soon. Just a little tease there. They're incredible. It was just a really cool experience. And Elijah is really unique because he's one of my best friends. He was my show dance partner and show choir. Um, He's also my boyfriend's best friend and my brother's best friend. So he's just like family, you know, it's, it's family. So we went out there, spent the whole weekend there, but Kansas city is really cool because it has a Nashville vibe to it. And then there's like another part of the city that a lot of people don't talk about it has a Spanish influence. So Mm -hmm. it's like you walk into a new country. It has fountains everywhere. Fun fact, it's the city with the most fountains in America. Yeah, I didn't know, but it really sparked my interest in like going to these smaller cities that aren't like really talked about, which Mm -hmm. I know Kansas City is like a major city. They have the Chiefs. They have Casey Current, first women's soccer team, love. Um, But I would definitely go back. So I'm really excited to share what I know about Kansas City. And then September, I went to a Purdue game, Purdue versus Notre Dame, which was really fun. It was also my birthday. So that was a really good experience, just tailgating, seeing some friends from Purdue. And October has been a great month too, but I haven't done a ton in October, busy with work, but it's been a good month. So I'm going to throw it to you, Kelsey. How has life been treating you? Um, It was busy there for a hot minute um yeah I got married on August 3rd so just a little over two months ago uh life has kind of slowed down since then which I've been loving but we're actually getting ready to move back to Francisville where I'm from um so you know packing up the house and moving everything two hours away that's what we're getting ready to do so kind of back into that busy time and then we have a my cousin's wedding that weekend Alex will be starting his new position at same company just different location and I will have my last day at USDA FSA next Friday And so my plans after that will be to open our boutique in the Tippecanoe Mall, having a storefront for the first time. So very busy, super exciting times, but um, I'm looking forward to all of it. So, Yes. I mean, I don't know how you are even sleeping right now. With (laughs) Seriously, like moving by itself is so stressful. And then you're trying to start your own business in a mall and you just were married. So now you're a married woman. So I thought we would talk about different phases of life in your 20s because you have just knocked out a bunch in just this year. Yeah. (laughs) But no, seriously, you graduated two years ago. Um, You just got married. You just had your honeymoon. You've had a few family emergencies, which I have too. And like, we can talk about that because I know how hard it is like being there and feeling like you can't really do anything. For sure. We'll definitely get into that, but I want to keep it light right now. You can... Okay, we can get into that later. Um, but then owning your own business and all those things, I thought we could do this because we can talk about so many things. You and I, we've literally sure. talked about this. So uh-huh. this <laughs> it'll let us kind of go wherever and have some wiggle room. So I think we should start with your wedding because that was okay. the last time we saw each saw other. Each other. So I know wedding planning can be stressful. I've seen oh, it. Yeah. So let's hear it all. I think that when you, you know, get engaged, you're obviously on cloud nine. Um, And then, you know, it kind of hits you that, okay, I have this wedding to plan. I did not realize that you need to book a venue like minimal 
year, year and a half in advance. Um, Allie's proposed in December. So then you kind of fall on that borderline. Okay, do I shoot for this next coming year or do I shoot for almost two years because of getting the time that we got engaged? Um, we both decided that two years was probably too long to wait for us um so we shot for 2024 and just getting engaged in December of 2023 um luckily I had already had some venues in mind and um the location we got engaged was the halfway point for both of our families or where we got married sorry not engaged but um so it actually worked out very well. We got there and we kind of went over the books of availability and there happened to be one weekend left in 2024. And so we kind of just took it and we were like, we're just going to have to make the rest work. Luckily, um, it all kind of fell together. Now as for like getting your wedding party, the bachelorette trip, the bridal shower, um, a lot of that was kind of just thrown together and it was what it was. But I really wouldn't have wanted it any other way um plus like you know there was some hiccups along the way leading up to the wedding day um with family so that kind of threw a wedge in some of the plans but I wouldn't have wanted it any other way so no yeah. and you're so positive about it and <laughs> just going back to the bachelorette party and stuff like that just kind of going with the flow sometimes I feel like that's the best way to do it I yes and I did have I think like who you put in your wedding is like very important too because those people I feel like you really will lean on to like help you make some decisions you're maybe like unsure about or like just kind of like guide you along the way so I luckily picked a really good group of girls to stand next to me and they were kind of my support system through other than you know other family members through some of the obstacles in the road along the way so that's I think a really important factor in it too no for sure and then I want to go back to the proposal I don't think I've heard your story um, okay yeah tell it so uh, Alice and I like had just like been talking about taking a trip and I was like you know winter they're really especially in Indiana, there's not a really a whole lot to do. So I was like, oh, like, you know, let's go to Gallenberg. And he was like on board with it. And so we booked a cabin, had some friends go with us. And I really didn't expect it. Um, I was like, oh, what if this is the trip that he does it on? Um, but, you know, we were almost to the end of the trip. I think it was the night before last. And we went up to Anakista, which is one of the, like, higher attractions. Like, I think it's the highest point you can be on the mountain. And they've got, like, bridges and twinkly lights so you can walk. or Like, you're high in the air walking on these bridges. It was pouring down rain. Like, pouring and some of his friends were like offering me a raincoat. I'm like, no, I'm not sure you're like, I'm not going to melt. My hair was already like, I had it curled and it looked like a mop. So I'm like, at this point, it doesn't really matter. Um, So we get up there and he's like, do you want to take a picture right here? And there was these twinkly, like almost like icicle lights. And I was like, no, I'm good because there was a bunch of people standing there. So I'm like, no, I'm good. Little did I know that's where he was planning to propose. So then he was like frantically trying to find another spot to propose at. And I didn't know this, but two of our guy friends that couldn't make the trip drove down to Gatlinburg the day of the proposal to surprise us. So that was really cool, too. So we found a spot where his parents um, actually took a picture. And I was like, yeah, we can get one here. That'd be really cute to, like, have a picture where your parents got a picture. And that's where he ended up doing it. And it was a half heart lit up. So it was really cute. But yeah, that's how we got engaged. That is so cute. And I love those stories because they can be so random. And I just want to give some context to the viewers. Kelsey always looks perfect. Like her hair is always done. Her makeup's like fabulous all the time. So it's kind of comical to me that he did it when your hair is drenched. I had to put my hair back in like a low bun because it was just, I mean, water was dripping off of my hair. I was like, okay. <laughs> So, and he was upset because he knows that I am usually very put together. So he was very upset because he's like, I was like, it's fine, Alex. We can take some pictures tomorrow. Like, it's not, I mean, I was on cloud nine, which I think everyone is when that happens. So 
But it's just so funny. And that's why I love those stories because yes. like they're so random sometimes. And I am terrified of how Ben is going to propose. Oh, I can't um, wait. I can't wait either, but I am scared because a quick little story time. To ask me to prom, he sent me the first time, my freshman year, his junior year. He sent me a letter in the mail. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cute, like romantic, old fashioned. So I'm over my bed and I open it up. Glitter flies out everywhere. It's a glitter bomb. And that's the better way he asked me to prom. So next year, it's his senior year. So we want to go big. We're walking to class because we had a class where we were next to each other. And then we would walk because we were high school sweethearts. So we're walking to class. And all of a sudden, he just falls in the hallway in front of everyone. And like everyone's just walking, doing their thing. And he's six foot eight so he falls and everyone's like staring then he turns around gets on one knee and says I fell for you will you go to prom with me (laughs) that is so funny yeah and that's just such a bend way to do it but I'm like if that's how he asked me to prom how is he gonna ask for marriage (laughs) this is his time to redeem himself (laughs) yes (laughs) But no, men are so funny because I feel like they don't think about like little stuff like that. Like if my nails are done, like I'm going to be a little upset because my nails are always done. My nails are always done too. But when we were going on this trip, like I had just gotten them done like a week ago. So they really didn't need done. And they were like a cranberry like color with um, the chrome dusting on them. So they were pretty, but like. I probably would have went with, like, French tips or something, have I would have known. So, like, I wish he would have, like, hinted at me, like, hey, like, why don't you go get your nails done for the trip? Like, I understand I probably would have caught on, but still, like, come on. Like a little, like, little notice. Yeah, yes, no, that's exactly. how I feel, too. And I feel like Ben's going to do it when I have no idea what's going on. Like, I'll probably be drenched or worse. I don't know. But I'll keep you updated on how it happens and when it happens because – our eight years was on the 21st. Okay. So eight years and counting, but we will keep you updated. So anyway, the wedding. So we talked about the proposal, the wedding. Um, Let's talk about the wedding day. So your wedding was in the afternoon. And yes. I just want to know, like, did it seem like super quick? Because every like party I have seems like it, it just bam. So the day, once the ceremony started, it went super quick. Leading up to the ceremony, I don't feel like it went super quick. Um, I had eight girls stand next to me. So, you know, when you go through hair and makeup, I mean, we started at 6 a.m. I was up by 4.30 a.m. that day. Um, So that part, I don't feel like went very quick. But once we got an hour within the ceremony, that all flew by. Yeah, I could see that. And I do remember your ceremony was quick because it was so hot outside. It was so hot. I was drip and I was the last one out. (laughs) And I was I was like, by the end of it, I'm not even kidding. I could feel sweat going down my dress. And I'm like, okay, like, no, I told, um, our pastor that was marrying us, he was like, do you, you know, what kind, how, how in depth depth do you want me to go with this? And I'm like, honestly, like, let's make it as quick as possible. Just because like, I knew Alex and I were going to be nervous the way it was. And he was like, yeah, he's like, that's fine with me. So, and plus it worked out because it was so hot outside that day. And no, I think all of your guests appreciated it. I'm just going to be straight up honest. I was like, wow, like that was quick, but I loved it. Like it, it said everything that needed to be said because sometimes it's a little drawn out, but no, Mm -hmm. that was perfect. I was involved the entire time. And like another thing about weddings, I become so emotional and I don't know why I like saw you walk out. I'm like, I can't. (laughs) I'm like that too. Even like weddings that like I went to with Alex where I like maybe they were from since we didn't grow up with each other. Like maybe I didn't know them, know them. Like I get emotional. I don't even know the people. So I completely agree with that. Yeah. I don't know. Every wedding I have cried, like I will admit it, even if I don't know them, like you said, tears. Yeah. All down my (laughs) face. But going back to wedding planning, 
what is one thing you would tell yourself back then or tell people who are getting married? What is your tip? Um, I'd say I, I really couldn't have done it without my mom. Um, so, you know, if, you know, your mom doesn't want the stress of, cause it is very stressful, the whole process. So, you know, maybe if your mom's like, okay, well, I don't want to be just as stressed out as you, I'd say find a very good wedding coordinator to kind of help you. Cause there's just so many little pieces that go into it that you really don't even recognize go into it until you're in the shoes of planning one. Um, so I'd say, you know, find a really good wedding coordinator, ask friends that had previously been married who they recommend, because like I said, so many little details go into it that you don't even think about and you kind of think you're set ready, you know, for this wedding. And then they are like, well, well, what about this? What about this? And it just kind of keeps adding up. So I say, you know, find, find some resources. I think that's the best tip I have, you know, and also like go into it with an open mind because I know that, you know, everyone looks at weddings of people they've been to and they're like, okay, well, I really like this, but I think I could spice it up maybe by doing this or this kind of just go into it. I feel like everybody's wedding is beautiful in their own way. So you know, yeah, just have an open mind and find resources that know what they're doing and can help you. <laughs> I love that. In this podcast, that's why I started. Like, let's help each other out. We're all in this life thing together. For sure. If you know something I don't, let's talk, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. But yes. So your wedding, it was gorgeous. The venue, amazing. Um, One thing I know that was super hard for you, and you are so strong for this. Um, Your dad was unable to come to your wedding. So, um, and you couldn't go to the pageant either. So another thing about Kelsey is we we met each other during the pageant and pageantry is huge for her. She does the little girls, um, gets them prepared and is like literally one of the backbone people <laughs> involved in the pageant world in Jasper County. So you weren't able to come to the pageant because your dad was in an accident. Yes. Um yeah, so July 12th was the pageant, and it was su- I was looking so forward to it. Um, I actually got to see Cicely the night before the pageant because that's the rehearsal night. So Cicely and I got to sit and kind of catch up that night a little bit. But um, pageant night was- is just so special, um, whether you are a past queen or have sor- served on the court at all. Um, it's just a special time. Fair week and, is special. And it was the 100th year. Yeah. Um, so I was definitely looking forward to that. We were bringing back all the county fair queens that were able to make it. Um, and so I was really looking forward to it. And again, like Cicely said, I help out or I direct the Little Miss pageant. Um, so uh, I was home from work that day and my dad farms and he was involved in a farm fire accident and actually like walked himself out of the fire Um talked to me waiting for the ambulance to get there um I kind of thought he was you know I knew he was hurt but I didn't know the extremes of it um you know he was like go to your go to the pageant like I know you're really excited for this you've worked with the girls you know each week um go to that well they got him in the ambulance and assessed him and it was a lot worse than you know what we could see um, I found out a lot about burns. They progress as they progress, they get worse. So when you first see the burn, it's not um, that's really nothing to compared to what you're going to see in days to come. So they assessed him and they actually lifelined him or I guess I don't know if lifelined him is the correct term, but they helicoptered him to Chicago. Um, by that point, word had gotten out. It's just, I look like I, Cicely said, I'm from a very small town. Um, so actually, one of the co pageant directors called me because she had already heard the news, and she was like, "We have it handled. Go be with your family." Um, so at that point, I told her, "Yeah, I'm gonna go to Chicago with my mom." So um, when we first got to the hospital that night, they looked at me and they were said, well, you know, the first thing he said to me was there's a family wedding coming up that he'd like to make. And um, I also learned that some doctors in bigger hospitals don't have the best bedside manner. Um, He looked, the doctor then turned and looked at me, you know, and 
two hours, three hours after the accident happened and said, yeah, he, he won't be there. Um, which I <laughs> immediately bursted into tears. Um, so then the nurse pulled me aside and she's like, we, we don't know. Um, we, you know, we cleaned his burns, but we don't know the extremes of it yet. So we can't really tell you, um, how long. Plus, like I said, burns progress by themselves. So they really needed some time to see what we were kind of dealing with. But yeah. <laughs> so one thing you said that really stuck out to me is like you didn't know a lot about burns until it happened. And I think that's a lot of times with health stuff. You don't know anything about it until you're thrown into it. Mm-hmm. So for example, um, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer at the beginning of this year. So she's still fighting. She has her uh, two more things of chemo this month, and then she'll have to be reassessed. But like you never think about these health issues until you are in the seat, like you're in the car with everything thrown at you at once. So it's unfortunate, but I'm glad that we do have things where we can like talk about each other. Cause I, burns are awful. And I've mm-hmm. known a few people who have been burns and it doesn't look as bad as first, but then the next day it'll look worse. And then a week later it looks horrific. So let's go back to the decision. So what were the conversations being had? Were you thinking about canceling your wedding and how did that all come about? Because I mean, to be honest, I think everyone was thinking, is she going to continue the wedding? I did. I was like, she's probably going to cancel. Like I get it, but you, yeah, I did. Um, it wasn't an easy decision. Um, honestly, like I still struggle, um, like thinking about it, like something like I'm getting choked up right now, but um yeah so I kind of obviously I called my boss the day that it happened just to kind of let him know um I'm not gonna be in work next week uh my boss was amazing he honestly kind of told me in the nicest way possible like I better not see you in the office for at least a week um I ended up getting time off from work until after my honeymoon so I did not go into work from the night the day of the rehearsal before the pageant all the way until after my honeymoon I was completely off work um which honestly looking back on it I don't know how I would have done the wedding been there with my family and like kind of stayed sane for my own self trying to work through all of that um because when the accident did happen it we were three weeks out, three and a half weeks out from my wedding. Um, yes. When the doctors finally did kind of tell me like, Hey, it's not looking great for him to be there. Um, I did want to cancel it. I kind of, you know, as soon as they told me that was in my head, like, okay, well, like we're just going to reschedule it. Um, but then, you know, there is other people to consider in that you know, we have Alex, we have our friends who already, you know, bought dresses, committed the day, taken the time, already scheduled off work. Also, you have to, like, like I was talking about the venue, um, people book those year, year and a half out. When was even the next availability that we could get in? Um, and then you also have my dad who did not want us to do that. So all of those factors kind of made me decide to stay with it um keep the day and continue on with our day um I probably would have for sure changed it if my dad wouldn't have been so um like I want you to carry on with it it still wasn't an easy decision um not at all the during the day getting ready um he was like the one that was on my mind um and especially like walk the father daughter dance and walking down the aisle those were pretty rough but yeah I just want to say like I think you were so strong for going through that like that was just incredible to me and your dad being there in spirit through the speech and everything was just absolutely beautiful and I'm so glad that he is able to be with you now you guys got the pictures redid yes. the wedding pictures so tell us about how he's doing now He is doing amazing. He is like almost months ahead of where the doctors thought he should be by now. He is back farming. He 
honestly is back to everyday life. Um, he has his last follow-up appointment on November 2nd, so that's coming up. So fingers crossed that, you know, he's kind of good to go. He has been doing physical therapy. And like you said, we did get to do some redo wedding pictures so that I have some with him, which I'm super grateful for. But yeah, he's doing amazing. So that's incredible. That is amazing. I know a lot of people are praying for him too. And oh, yes, we had a we had a village behind us. And that's the good thing about small towns. I talk about this a lot because like that's our makeup. That's where we're from. And we have to appreciate that in hard times, small towns do come together and it it sure. really warms my heart. Yeah. I I think growing up didn't appreciate the small town as much as I should have. And I think as you get older, you really do. I mean, we're headed back. So yeah, I small towns have something special about them. They do. And tell us about moving back. How are you feeling about that? Alex is moving up here. So talk about it. I am super excited to move back. Um, of course, my family's all up there. His is down here. And, you know, we've lived down here with his family for over a year now. Um, and we will obviously make many visits to come visit his. But, um, you know, Alex is very much interested in agriculture as well. He works for Bain Walker. Um, so the future, you know, when my dad retires, Alex will probably step into that role working for the farm with my brother. Um, so, and also just like, like we said, growing up in a small town, being around agriculture, I know that I probably wouldn't understand or appreciate agriculture if I wouldn't have grown up around it to, you know, cause you know, if you don't grow up around it, if you're not by it daily, you don't, not saying you don't appreciate it, but you kind of get to see the behind the scenes and really like be involved and under, I guess, un have a clear understanding of what it's about and what it does. So I'm super excited to, you know, start a family in the, the same town and kind of have the same roots that I came from. That's beautiful. And another big development, you are opening your own store. So how yes. did this happen? Take us to the beginning with the boutique and okay. where it is at today. So my mom created a love for fashion within me in like a super young age. I remember like everyone loved the clothing store Justice. I know it's not like a super big thing anymore, but that was huge when we were in school or when oh, yeah. we were younger. Like I loved Justice. Anyway, that love for clothing, fashion, accessories only got stronger as I got older. Thanks, mom. And so I think I'm trying to remember when we started it. I think I was a senior, senior, junior. I was either a senior or junior at Purdue. And my mom was like, all right, let's, let's give it a try. So we opened, got a couple, you know, ordered, got items, opened an online store, um, and we got quite a few orders within the first day of being open. So then my town has a mercantile, so we kind of rented, you can like rent spaces, and there's a bunch of shops, and it. it's super cute, um, especially for Francisville, like, that is very small. Um, so we put our clothes and stuff in there, and people love it. Um, and then kind of the storefront kind of came about because we are moving up there. So I was going to be in between jobs because obviously I was leaving the one down here. And so I was kind of like looking for, you know, what I might want to transition to do moving back there. And mom's like, well, um, the mall offers holiday, um, rent like you can just rent it for a month during the you know holiday season she's like would you would you want to try it out and she's like you know you're in between jobs you wouldn't have to quit your job because you know how how would you do this if you have a full-time job and so I was like I mean yeah I'm like let's give it a try you know when else would I ever have the time to try this? So that's what we're doing. So we are going to be opened the week before Black Friday all the way until I think the week after Christmas. So we actually will have it for almost two months in the Tippany Mall. And we're going to kind of just take it from there and see how it goes. Well, first of all, I am so excited to be there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is amazing. And what perfect timing. Mm -hmm. life, it, life works in a mysterious way. It, it really does. It honestly kind of all pieced itself together and we're going to take it and run. So that is amazing. I didn't know that you guys had a store in Francisville either. So 
it is going to stay there while you have the holiday. Yes. So we are going to leave some items there. We are going to take majority of our inventory and we already have started ordering more. Um, but yeah, we'll have some stuff left in Francisville in the mercantile. And then we will have the storefront set up in the Tipicanoe Mall. Wow. That, I mean, there has to be a lot that goes into this. So tell us like a behind the scenes, what is going on? So we honestly have just started more ordering some more inventory right now, kind of picking and choosing what we wanted to get. Um, and then after my last day next Friday at my current job with Farm Service Agency where we can pick up the keys to the storefront and then we have kind of like three weeks to get this storefront put together and ready to go. So um, my mom's super creative. She's honestly kind of a perfectionist so I have no doubts that it's going to all work out. Um, we might be pulling some all-nighters but that's okay. <laughs> so yeah honestly we don't have like a set in stone plan yet because I'm just trying to finish out my job currently and getting moved up there but yeah <laughs> that is so exciting I literally am so excited I will be there probably on Black Friday so awesome awesome <laughs> yeah wait. definitely stop in and say hi definitely will um that is awesome so this whole episode I've kind of hinted that you are this like fashionista <laughs> girl like, you know you literally have like the best fashion so I want to, I want you to give some fashion tips. Um, what do you do when you pick out an outfit? Um, just mm -hmm. random advice. I feel, like, give. I feel like my outfit choices really depend on the, like where event I'm going to. Cause I feel like for work, I'm very like business casual. Like I got the nice business pants on, you know, business, like I really do look like I'm going to my corporate job. But then when I'm out with friends, it kind of, you know, obviously shifts. So honestly, I feel like I get a lot of my inspo just from, you know, influencers, social media, which I feel like everybody kind of does. And then um, also, like I said, growing up on a farm, you wouldn't always know that. I feel like if you saw me out in public, like, yeah, exactly. No, but I'm, I'm I'm the same way too. Like when I tell people I grew up on a farm, they're like, huh? <laughs> yeah, they're like, I don't see you. And like that I did 10 years of 4-H showing pigs, sheep, and rabbits. Like they're like, no way, that's not you. But there is some things I think that I wear that are more of that like Western vibe. So I feel like my style is kind of like all over the place. But as far of as far as like inspo or like how I choose a dress, um, yeah, I feel like social media influencers. Who are your favorite influencers or like social media sites? Do you use Instagram, Pinterest? I'd say Instagram and TikTok are like my go-tos right now. Um, my favorite like Western-y girl was that Taylor Griggs, but um, I know she like recently passed away from being ill. Super sad, just turned 25, just got married a year ago. Super sad. I know that's been all over social media. But she was awesome. And then um, there's a couple other girls that own boutiques. Uh, Shop These Three Boutique, which they're super popular. Um, love them. Three sisters that own that one from Alabama. So, yeah, that's kind of the, my go-tos. Sweet. And I use Pinterest a lot. I love Pinterest. Yes, Pinterest. Um, Pinterest for clothes, meals, everything. Literally everything. Everything mm -hmm. is on there. And before we close out, I think it's only appropriate that we talk a little bit about pageantry because we both sure. were in it. Um, you are coaching now. And I'm sure this is going to be more in your future, too, because you just have a passion for it and you love it and you're so good at it. And you <laughs> taught you. me everything I know. So, oh, <laughs> so let's talk about pageantry. What got you into it? Um what was it like being queen? And do you see a future of pageantry? Um, I don't see a future of pageantry. If you would have asked me like freshly out of being county fair queen, I would have said possibly. Um, I do feel like there is a huge difference with being a county fair queen and then running for um, pageants. Like um, I don't know what some of the other pageants are, but I do feel like there is a difference. Um, I, I guess I can't really like say that because I've never been in another pageant. But yeah, probably not. Um, you know, with getting married, starting your life kind of takes different directions. And 
I don't really see myself running for any more. Um, kind of, you know, going to want to start a family here within the next year. And I don't think it's in my cards. But um, being queen and what kind of got me to run for county fair queen, um, like I said, I was a 10-year 4-H member. I had an older brother. So even before I could be in 4-H, I was at the fairgrounds. And I feel like every girl's answer is kind of the same, but you see the fair queens and when you're a little girl, you just look up to them. So I think at a young age, I kind of decided like I would love to be in that position. Um, also, you know, being a 10, four, 10 year 4-H member, the fair in the county just meant so much to me. And I feel like being queen was a great way to give back to a county and fair that gave so many good memories and so much to me. So those are the reasons why. And that's really something that opened my eyes when I was queen, even like during COVID, like everything was shut down. It was so cool to be part of the county and giving back to the yes. county where you grow up. It's just, it meant a lot. And I really got into volunteering from that mm -hmm. and giving back to the community. That was like the number one thing that I really got from the experience. Yes. I knew when I was queen, I wanted to volunteer as much as I could. And so like, I know we went and played bingo with nursing homes. Uh, we t attended all the parades that we could. We did a uh, food and supply drive for the Jasper County Animal Shelter. Um, we really did. I went and read to a couple preschools. We did as much as we could to really make the most of the year. So it was super special. And I think also just getting to know, you know, the fair board more. You know, you see them around on fair week when you're a 4-H'er, but how often do you really get to sit and talk to them? So I think that was awesome getting to see the faces behind the ones creating the fair week for us. Yeah, that's a good point too. meeting new people in the community and having those connections, which has been huge in both of our lives. Um, For sure. And pageantry itself has been huge. And I'm glad you talked about the difference between pageants and the county pageants, because there is a huge difference. It's uh, not like toddlers and tiaras. It's more yes. of like uh, confidence. And I know pageantry still does get a bad rep. People think, yeah. oh, like, oh, you're just beauty, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's more than that. You learn a lot. So talk about what you've learned in the pageant other than just being a beauty queen. Um, So you come, obviously, as you know, we do mock interviews and most of your score is dependent on the interview. And I feel like I have definitely taken those interview skills, you know, with me, Um whether it was, you know, things in college or even honestly just communicating with people in general. Um, moving on to college, you know, you do in interviews for internships. You have to, you know, go have a conversation with your professor. I just feel like the pageant itself sets you up with so many skills that you can take with you. Um, I really can't talk more highly about the pageant like I just I love count. I love everything those pa the county fair queen pageants stand for. I 100% agree. I still look back at that resume I made, just to look at how I formatted and everything yes. and other stuff too, like the outfits, uh, learning how to like walk even and talk to people in front of people, do the speeches. I think it's really good for all girls to do pageants sometime in their life because yes. it kind of pushes you out of that comfort zone. Yes. And makes you do things that you're uncomfortable with, but like you will need to know how to do this in the real world. Yes, and, I completely agree. And it's funny, like looking back in the pageant, um, my experience, which I loved. I the girls, you meet so many amazing girls too. I'm still really good friends with my first runner up. Um, some of the girls I met at the state pageant were amazing, and we were still connected. When I did a event this summer. I was a guest speaker and it was amazing. All it was a girl event, which you gotta go next year. It would be oh, right up sure. your alley. Um, I would love that. But one of the girls in the crowd was Miss Laporte County. Oh, and she cool. remembered me and it was like a really cool moment, like how small the world is in the pageant to your world. For sure. Yeah. Like I said, I can't speak on other pageants because I've never done them. Um, I just and I know that, you know, you're representing an organization that I think is super important to you. I just do feel like the county fair queen is just a whole nother um, different pageant 
they're they're just two completely different worlds and that's okay they're they really they still are pageants just two different worlds yeah and what would you say to someone who is thinking about becoming a fair queen this is one of the questions so I gotta gotta throw you into it I would say um go for it you know they're there's nothing to lose. Um, either way, you'll walk away with either skills that you've learned or, you know, maybe walk away with a crown and the opportunity to represent the county that means so much to you. So there's really nothing to lose. And you can also gain lasting friendships like you and I. So yeah. And no wonder why you won. Perfect answer. <laughs> but no, I think this has been a great episode. We've talked about a lot of different topics in a short amount of time and we could continue talking I'm sure Oh, for sure <laughs> um I'm gonna give you the opportunity to kind of take over is there anything yeah. else you want to talk about anything life pretty I mean, pretty I out there like, I feel like we've covered like a lot of like currently what's going on in our life so I feel like you did a really good job you know covering all the bases Awesome. And I mean, you're always welcome back. Um, maybe oh, after the sure. storefront, I want to hear oh, about for this. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, but let's talk about where people can find you and support you, uh, the boutique, your website. I'll link it all in the podcast description. But yeah, where can people find you? Where is the boutique going to be? Yeah. So at the Tippecanoe Mall, we'll be right outside of Kohl's and or, yeah Kohl's and right next like kind of right by Francesca's journeys so right there yeah right in the corner there yeah good spot for my sure my grandma was asking she's like oh where's she gonna be so <laughs> yes we'll be right there awesome and then Instagram where can people connect with you we so my personal is at Kel- hmm. Kelsey Cromenaker underscore. I think I had to think, you know, I had to change that in the past two months. And then our Instagram is shop beautiful you boutique underscore. Perfect. All right. Anything else you have to add? I don't think so. Thanks for having me. This was Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. Yeah, this was so fun. Um, but thank you for tuning in to Just Life, um, the the podcast where we talk about Just Life. Tune in next time to hear the next chapter. Bye. Bye.